This week's classic interview is an interview that I received a ton of emails about. We recently had, uh, I don't know whether to call him evangelical pastor. He's kind of a televangelist. I don't know what to call the guy. We had Ray Comfort on the show. And there were references made during that inter interview to my past interviews with him, some of which have been very, very compelling. So for this week's classic interview, we're going back to my interview from March of 2014 with Ray Comfort, where we talked about the uh, Hollywood movie Noah. And Ray Comfort, as, as may not come as a surprise to many in our audience, found the movie disrespectful because of what he felt were inaccuracies in the movie about the story of Noah from the Bible. I don't think it needs much more explanation. I don't think it needs much more introduction. This is an interview that I want a lot of our the new people in our sort of uh, audience universe to check out. It was referenced during last week's interview with Ray Comfort, and it is endlessly fascinating. Let's take a look. I am joined once again by Ray Comfort. He is co-host of the TV program The Way of the Master. It's been a little while since he was last on the program. It's always a pleasure to have you, Ray. You know, you and I have had disagreements over the years about different topics. We've talked about abortion. We've talked about the Bible and gay marriage, etc. But today we're talking actually about movies and about Hollywood. And there is, of course, the big Hollywood story of Noah. But there's also another Noah movie that is being released. You don't particularly like the Hollywood Noah. Let's start there. What don't you like about it? Well, they've got a precedent in Hollywood. They can make a lot of money if they just stay true to the Bible. When Cecil B. DeMille in 1956 uh, produced the Ten Commandments, he didn't produce the Twelve Commandments and drop the adultery one because it made him feel uncomfortable. It was Ten Commandments. They stayed true to Scripture, and America loved it. It was the highest grossing, grossing film of 1956. The same with Ben Hur. They had poetic license, went all over the place. Ben Hur kissing ladies, whatever, whatever they want to do, that's fine. But when it came to biblical uh, material, they stayed true according to Scripture. Jesus wasn't crucified between two rapists because it sounded better. It was between two thieves. America loved it. 11 Academy Awards, highest grossing film of 1959. That's the precedent. They can do it. Hollywood can just stay true with what the Bible says. Don't make it up as you go along. What happened with this latest Russell Crowe version is they made it up when they went along. It was originally listed as fiction. They've since changed it to adventure. And they had all sorts of things. Noah being a psychopathic, drunken guy who wanted to kill his grandson. That ark, instead of landing on the uh, uh, mountains of Ararat, landed on a beach somewhere. So. It's just sad they don't see that they can make a lot of money by just respecting what we believe. So you've created or you're involved with an alternative movie, which I've seen the preview for, and people can check that out at NoahTheMovie.com. What's the what's the concept behind the alternative Noah movie? Well, if they've got the fake Noah, we've got the real one. We've just gone according to Scripture, and Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, in the days of Noah, certain things were happening that would happen just before the coming of Christ. That's what the Bible teaches. And in Noah's day, there was much violence on the earth. Uh, men's hearts were corrupt, very evil, full of uh, wicked imaginations, and there was great corruption. And we see that in today's society. So we took 10 biblical signs of the end of the age and put them into one movie. You know, only God knows the future. Uh, psychics don't know the future. If they did, they'd all move to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, predict the role of the dice and be billionaires living in mansions, but they don't know the future. No, Neither, we, we agree on that. But you yeah. and I both agree that psychics are apparently not a real thing. I don't I don't believe right. in psychics. But I guess my question would be, and this is where we, we often get bogged down. I'm curious what, why you're so concerned with what you describe as creative liberties being taken in the sense that the Bible makes assertions and you make the assertion that the Bible tells a literal story, but that's all it is. It is, it is merely an assertion. And I know from talking to you that you had, you describe when you found Jesus and started a relationship with Jesus. If I recall correctly, you grew up Jewish originally. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. That's right. Yes. Uh, but but so really, you're just making an assertion that you think the Bible story I is true. So uh, do you find it offensive that this no the Hollywood Noah is not telling the story that you assert to be true? No, I find it. I don't find it offensive. I find it very disappointing. Okay. They don't they don't get it. They they. Their bottom line is to make money. If they want to make money, please Christians by not twisting what they believe. Oh, look, I've got a sequel for you. This is what Hollywood can do next. 
they can do a movie called Muhammad, and they can paint Muhammad as a drunken psychopath and see how many uh, Muslims line up two by two to come in and support their movie. They wouldn't do that because they respect Muslims. They know there'd be serious repercussions if they did that, but they do it with Jesus Christ. They do it with the Bible. They twist things and change things. No big deal. It is a big deal to us, and if they want us to support them, we will support them in the millions if they just stay a true, true according to the Scripture. That's all we're asking. But do you think, Ray, that then I'm, I'm uh, maybe uh, interpreting what you just said about the respect for Muhammad. Do you think that in the United States, the, the Muslim faith is more respected than Christianity? It's more feared. It's certainly more feared in that we have so much corporate media propaganda making us scared of Muslims as terrorists, but I don't know if that's what you mean. It is what I mean. Uh, Muslims will cut your head off if you do a cartoon of uh, Muhammad. So, so you you're saying movie, they're rightly feared? Oh, I think so. We've got, we've got, uh, uh, I just have to watch the news tonight, look in the media, media today. They are very angry that this movie has even been made. I'm not angry, I'm disappointed. I think here is an opportunity to uh, respect Christians and, and even Jews, because Jews believe the Old Testament, and just, just say what happened in the Bible, and they're going to make a movie, and they can have their po poetic license, have Noah run around doing what he want, but, wants. But I guess my question is, you using the you said you're not offended, which is good. I'm glad that you're not offended, but you said that it's disrespectful to the story, but again, the story itself is only an assertion, and it is, it is not a historical text. That's your assertion. I believe it's an historical text. It happened, I believe, in a literal worldwide catastrophic flood. I believe there was a man named Noah who built an ark. We have his genealogy. It's very clear. You don't believe, I believe. And this is America. We can agree to disagree. No, no question about that. Uh, with, with regard to your movie, let's talk about your movie a little bit. Okay. Your movie in the preview, I've not seen the movie, but based on the preview that your publicist sent me, the movie says it will give you 10 prophecies that reveal the future of the world as well as 10 indisputable signs that we are living in the last days. They now, are 10. Yeah, absolutely. Now, 60% of Americans, according to the Pew Research Center, think that so-called end times theories of the, either the return of the Messiah, apocalypse, rapture, etc., are totally bogus. So do you think that that's really palatable right now to the average American? Absolutely. They're being fed lies by the liberal media. Uh, lies about the Bible by uh, atheists across the country who, who don't understand Scripture and don't know the Lord. Then but you to make be clear, your Ray, are you saying that the reason 60% of Americans find the entire concept of end times theories to be bogus is because they've been tricked into thinking that by the liberal media and atheists? Perhaps. But it, it, I, I'm, not, I'm not impressed by percentages. I, I, it, I, I'm what not impresses you? Tell me what impresses you. Truth impresses me. But look, Pontius Pilate had a vote. Should we crucify him or not? And the majority said crucify Christ. And it was a wrong thing to do. Just because 60% say something's true or not true doesn't change truth. If I believe the sun comes out at night, it's square and it's made of ice, doesn't matter what I believe. If I get the whole world to agree with me, it doesn't change realities. Well, but the reality difference there, Ray, we have to, you and I, I know that this is usually the point in the interview where you talk about no explanation for the creation of a blade of grass or a bird. That, that's usually where you go to, but I would be no, remiss if I did. No. But hold on a second, Ray. I do not. Hold on a second. You, you've said that many times. I know that line almost by heart. There's I no explanation for a blade of grass? Hold on a second, though. It, well, your explanation would be God created it. But the question that's I'm trying to get to, Ray, is there's a difference between an assertion about about God, for example, or maybe I'm asking you, I'll phrase it this way. Is there okay. a difference between an assertion about the creation of the universe by God and an assertion that the sun is square and made of ice? Because one we can observe now and the other is based on assertions made by men who wrote the Bible. No, absolutely wrong. Incorrect. No. So it's the same. They're the same types of assertions. A absolutely. The They're assertion not assertions. about the assertion you don't about make an God. assertion about the sun being hot. It's axiomatic. You don't make an assertion about it coming out in the daytime. It comes out in the daytime and it's hot. And it's the same with the existence of God. It's axiomatic. Scientifically, there's a creator. It we can't don't, be a but, creation but, without well, a creator. But that's only if you accept that there was a creation. 
And and that is actually an you're implicit in your statement, Ray. And I don't I, I know we're language. not going to, I know we're not going to agree on this, but implicit let me, let me in your language, language is the idea that there was a creation. Let me let me change my language and make it atheistic. Nature is absolute proof there is a maker. Nature couldn't create itself. For nature to create itself, it had to be pre-existent to make itself before it made itself, which is scientifically ludicrous. So no, no, no. See- but this is this is a logic game that is often played, and it already assumes so many things. And it is kind of wordplay because then we say, well, what is nature? Was we could argue that nature was even before we had the colloquial nature on Earth that matter and energy are nature. The, the entire idea of what you're presenting, Ray, assumes that there was what you would describe as a creation. And we don't know that. You don't know it. You, well, how do you know it? Because I've got common sense. No, it's because Goodness you believe me. God. It's because you assert that God is right and it is only an assertion, Ray. Okay. So we just have to agree to differ. We will. We will. Last thing I want to talk about. Do you think that maybe we need to not worry so much about whether the movies like Noah stray from what you consider to be the biblical truth because more and more we have fewer and fewer people identifying as religious. So, for example, if you look at August 2012, the sociology of religion study from the early 70s to 2012, consistently we see people secularizing and reducing church attendance. Is it maybe possible? Are you open to the idea that we're at a time in society where people are just moving away from religion and are just more interested in being entertained by Noah the movie than seeing what you might call the biblical accurate version? The more people that move away from religion, religion, the better. Religion never helped a soul. The world is full of different religions of people striving to get right with God by their own efforts. In Christianity, God grants everlasting life to all those who repent and trust in Jesus. Nothing religious about it. You don't have to do good works. Don't have to do religious works. Just repent and trust in Christ. And I'm not worried about Noah. As I said, I'm disappointed. And disrespected and disrespected by it. Yeah. Well, they need to respect Christians the same way they respect Muslims. Okay, but so you're saying you're unconcerned with people moving away from religion. You think? Oh that, no! The quicker they move away from religion, the better. Come to Christ, repent, trust in Him, but find that, everlasting life. So you say that Christianity is not a religion? Is that what you're Didn't saying? Didn't say that. Didn't say that. Christianity is one of the great religions. I'm saying being religious cannot save a soul. Only faith in Jesus can. I see what you're saying. I see what mm-hmm. you're saying. Okay, good. Well, I think we've cleared up a lot of things. We didn't good. agree as we often don't, Ray. I would encourage my audience to, if they care about these movies at all, which not everybody does, go see the Hollywood version, go see the one that you can see at NoahTheMovie.com, and I think people can judge for themselves. Right. All right, very good. Ray Comfort, a pleasure as always having you on. Good. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you.